Tonight, in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television, after the series of happenings that hit back to school that was in the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon during, that is during, before, during and after back to school, President Paul Bia, the President of the Republic of Cameroon, has maintained that the safety of students, pupils and teaching staff would be guaranteed, but that has not been enough to enhance effective back, back to school. As we are going to be observing in the chief town of the southwest region of Cameroon, our guest tonight is going to be telling us why government's strategy to foster effective school resumption in the northwest and the southwest region of Cameroon is still a fiasco. That is our lone headline tonight. We shall be right back with the details. Stay with us. Good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to join us in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. Today it is, is the 6th of September 2018. Let's begin right to in the nation's capital. The President of the Republic of Cameroon has assured teachers and students in the two Anglophone regions of the country of their utmost security despite what he called acts of barbarism perpetrated by what he equally described as secessionist by secessionist in a released by the communication minister Issa Shuma Bakari, the president of the Republic, strongly condemned what he described as brutal killings, uh, killing of a head teacher at government primary school Bamali, that is in Gokutunja division of the northwest region of Kamun. That was an incident which occurred uh, prior to school resumption on the 2nd of September 2018, the kidnapping of six students of Presbyterian Gross Secondary School, that is PGSS in Bafu, the attack on a school in Kumbo Bui Division of the Northwest Region of Cameroon and the St. Joseph's College in Sase, Fako Division of the Southwest Region of Cameroon. President Pobia equally extended his compassion to the afflicted families. That was an outing. Uh, just a few hours ago by the Minister of Communication, Government Spokesperson, Issa Shuma Bakari. But the reassurances seem not to be enough to enhance effective school resumption in the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon. Back to school is still very timid in some parts of the northwest and the southwest regions. In the southwest region, to be more uh, precise, the governor, Bernardo Kaliabila, visited some schools to supervise the effectiveness of class resumption or of classes. Derek Jato was part of the team with the governor of the southwest who reports that the governor's convoy was not only heavily guarded, but some schools were still without students and pupils. His report. <laughs> It is with tight security, the element combat ready, that the Southwest Governor Mr. Bernardo Kaliabilai descended downtown Boya to visit some schools, day two of the 2018-2019 academic year. The first day of Monday, September 3, witnessed a wild sitting strike and nobody was on any campus, but today the story is different some students have come to school and the admission list in some institutions have been published from government high school boya presbyterian secondary school boya town government bilingual grammar school moliko boya to government technical high school boya not leaving out the lone government primary school visited governor bernard okalia bilai had a one-on-one -on -one discussion with the school head and also noted that the resumption has taken off but very timid. He will even ask some students why their schoolmates have not come to school. The reason why at the end of the day, the Southwest Governor begged parents to see sending their children to school as a parental obligation. Particularly, we want to encourage the parents to accompany the younger ones who are at the primary school to, to, to schools. The future is in your school. Do if you want to be a good farmer, you must know how to be a good farmer. 
Even if you want to be a mechanic, a medical doctor, a lecturer, an officer, you must go to schools. Some schools are yet to register even one student on some campuses in the southwest region. That is Derry Jato, the reporting from the Southwest Regional Headquarters of Boya after Governor Bernardo Kalabilai taught round some academic institutions within his area of command. Now, teaching and learning processes have been going on effectively in some schools in Kong Samba 1, while in the Mongo Division of Cameroon and also in Bafang of the Western region of the country, but public schools are still in dire need of infrastructures. Innocent Aze has the details in this report. Schools in Kongsamba in the Mungo division of the littoral region kick off both of hitches with effective lessons granted learners. A case in point is government English practicing school in Kongsamba 1 municipality. Effectively in this school at 7.30 the pupils were already there. Uh, the, uh, the school, the teachers were there, the classes were open. Children were already effectively in the classroom with their teachers with the teaching lesson learning process starting. The lot of people on the one and the first week in general has been massive, like in government's Balingua nursery and primary school Ekante in Kongsamba. Some of the learners came in from the northwest and southwest regions. The problem there is that we don't have enough classrooms and even where the children are going to sit, it has not been easy. So I don't even know where we are, what are we going to do at this particular, this particular time. As you can see, there's a parent behind you. These are all newly parents with new, uh, they are coming from all over. So it has not been easy since in the morning because they are looking for admission for their children. There are some children that they, have come, they are coming from southwest and northwest. They are here. Resumption was not all that smooth in government English practicing school in Kongsamba. We had took time to put, give back the desk that we we borrowed from book two for the official admission first school uh living circuit 2018 so that took us uh, wasted a lot of time so by nine o'clock we attended all that parents are still coming to have their book list and to buy the books for the children uh there may be a difficulty on this uh, buying of this because i just visited a small bookshop which is principally for our books for our before schools they told me that the textbooks are not yet there but for now that notwithstanding the children have can have exercise books that will help us to start effectively. Parents have been exasperated over the absence of textbooks in libraries. In the West region, it was as well a smooth takeoff, like in the C Classic de Bafang. A secteur, moi le cas, tout le staff du C Classic était présent. Students, according to school authorities, who violated the dressing code, were sent away. Parce que le premier jour, Discipline, she says, must prevail on day one of school resumption. Discipline. Classes began effectively. Nous avons, uh, the loan problem was to direct parents on the procedures to register their children. At Lycée Technique de Bafang, some students thought it while standing due to limited seats to contain the exploding number of students present. In all, resumption was massive and classes effective in all the schools we visited in Bafang and Kongsamba. And for 36 euros, the government of President Paul Bia so far failed to improve the academic sector. In the country, that is the view of some opposition party candidates running for the 7th of October presidential election in Cameroon. They are unanimous that the educational system in Cameroon needs reform. In their respective political manifestos, the candidates have been proposing ways to change and better the system after they finally unseat the current regime. A reporter, Fomi Armstrong Sander, went through some of the uh, policies or rather the programs of the various for presidential candidates as far as education is concerned. He tells us more in the following report. One can now point out without fear of contradiction the uniting factors among most of the opposition political party candidates running for the post of president in Cameroon. Going by their manifestos, Cameroon's educational system is sick and needs to be overhauled, in some cases totally overhauled. Maurice Camto's Cameroon Renaissance Movement Party is nostalgic about the time that Cameroon had one of the best educational systems in Africa. 
He plans to liberalize the educational system and create state universities oriented by development objectives in all 10 regional headquarters in Cameroon. Maurice Camto believes that children need to be initiated with ITC skills from the basic educational level. He plans to get a school enrollment of 100% within 10 years. Considering the current system as inadequate and declining, Cabral Libby says quality education is at the center of his vision for Cameroon. Under what he could name Cameroon that protects and releases energies, the candidate for the Universe Party proposes an educational system whose mission and innovation will drive Cameroon towards progress and industrialization. He plans to recruit 220,000 teachers every year for primary, secondary and higher educational institutions in the country. Gaga Aman Adji wants Cameroonians to start specialization at the second cycle of secondary education. He lays more emphasis on strengthening the vocational training sector. Akere Tambeng Muna of the Popular Front for Development Party wants access to education for all Cameroonians, especially at the primary and secondary educational level. Consequently, Akere Muna plans to restore school establishments and improve working conditions of teachers. Serge Espoir Matomba of Pius Party says he will define a single orientation law of education. He plans to import Espoir who will work on strategies to standardize the different educational systems in Cameroon. Prophet Franklin D. For Afanyu of the CNCM Party on his part hopes to modernize the Cameroon educational system. Perhaps the most outstanding and extreme educational vision for Cameroon vis-a-vis -vis the current system is that of Joshua Osi, candidate of the Social Democratic Front SDF party. Osi Joshua says he will make university institutions autonomous and democratize them so that rectors are elected. Joshua Osi plans to shut down some institutions like Enam and create institutes attached to universities which will make civil servants more... We sincerely apologize for that hitches. We surely will be coming back to that report in our subsequent newscast. Now, experts in environmental protection are calling for the enhancement of the education of citizens to be able to curb environmental hazards in the country. They spoke to Babila Jonathan during a meeting which took place in the city of Douala today. His report. Human activities like accelerated industrialization, rapid urbanization, increasing consumption of natural resources, the development of modern agricultural and transport techniques have become major threats to human survival. Environmental pollution emanating from human activities, for instance, is increasingly a major problem in Cameroon and most African countries. Paradoxically, environmental protection is hampered by several challenges. The main problem now is uh, having uh, sufficient uh, financial resources uh, to, to finance environmental protection. Even to protect the, the town, a city like Douala against uh, west, uh, the flood, the urban community need financial means. Experts in environmental protection recommend the education of citizens as the first step towards enhancing environmental protection. It is the objective of this 700-page book launched in Douala Thursday and her people. Uh, all citizens should be educated on environmental protection. Uh, if each citizen in the society is well educated in uh, environmental protection, I mean the, the environmental will be better protected. Because we think that uh, it's important for the young generation to be aware of what is, of what is happening in the world. Africa is also concerned about uh, the climate change and the global warming. And in particular, the government of Cameroon um, want to to, to educate his uh, population, his young generation. That's why we published this book with the help of uh, Professor Kamyogo. And we, we hope, we have a hope that he will help the student to be uh, more active in this uh, topic. The book speaks the urgent need to adequately address the increasing environmental challenges affecting Cameroon. 
That is Babla Jonathan there reporting. Before we take you to the second part of this newscast to get to some parts of the Douala Free subdivision via Antri B. It's a veritable nightmare road users have to brave the muddy road, especially during this period of the rainy season, to get to their destinations. It has so far affected economic activities negatively, as Fomi Armstrong Sander tells us in the following report. This is the ordeal visitors and inhabitants of the Ankrebil neighborhood are subjected to moving in and out of their locality. The road is deplorable, extremely bad, a veritable nightmare. We are in Dwala 3 subdivision, the only stretch of road linking Ankrebil and the rest of the subdivision has been transformed into a pool of thick and slippery mud. The cause of this road is due to the poor drainage pattern that we have here in village the road is really very bad as you can see you see water is standing everywhere gutters are not well fixed they are not well opened water cannot circulate and the roads the, the pattern of the road is not well organized the road which is in an advanced state of degradation has rendered life a living hell to the population who ply it every day to go about their business you see stores are everywhere places are, are very bad Cars cannot even pass. The things that uh, the government pretends to have done, like fix the road, put, put ground, it, is, it has become very muddy. So we can't really tell that we are living in an environment where people can go to school. You can see children are afraid to go to school. There is just a school here that children are, they, they, they are not, they cannot start school this week. Pedestrians as well as vehicle owners pull a lot of courage to brave the odds on this stretch of road. Users are exposed to accidents and the hiking transports, which are fallouts of the bad state of the road. Residents have, however, employed several initiatives to rehabilitate the stretch of road. We are really trying to see how things can, can move, can, can go well. We are trying to open the gutters. We are trying to, 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 to remove the ground that, 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 that the mayor has have come and put here. The efforts, according to them, can only yield fruits and lasting solutions to their problem if the local authorities come on board. And on to something else, on a rather sad note, we, uh, UN cargo truck uh, collided with a minibus that was at Bumyabel in Yohan Kelly Division of the Center Region of Cameroon that was an accident that is said to have claimed the lives of an estimated five persons, according to witnesses on the ground. Several persons were equally injured in the course of the incident. Local administrative authorities are still to present the balance sheet of the situation. We, of course, will be coming back to that in our subsequent newscast. They're bringing us to the end of this first segment of the news. Time for us to meet our guests tonight. Stay with us. Tonight we are going to be talking back to school in the two Anglophone regions of the country and the 7th of October 2018 presidential election in Cameroon that is going to be taking place in less than one month or in exactly one month from now. We have been joined by journalist Mr. Franklin Sonebayen. Good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Talking Point. Pleasure to be here, Mimi. It's been a while since I was last in the studio. The pleasure is ours as well. My first preoccupation is back to school that was plagued by a series of happenings. We saw the outing of still, uh, the Minister still be, of Communication. Still, still being plagued. Yeah, yeah sure. Still, the, 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 the outing of the Communication Minister. The statement minister doesn't bring closure to it. It's still, still happening. It's still happening today. Is that what you're saying? Because you're, of course, a journalist. But now the Minister of Communication, Issa Shiroma Bakari, has issued a statement uh, s uh, citing the series of events that marked back to school before, during, and after indicating that some school heads were actually attacked, some killed, institutions attacked. So far, the government has been reassuring the population of their safety as far as back to school is concerned. How would you evaluate the situation? It's, it's a very sad thing for me because for those who know me, I have uh, been very frontal in wishing that schools resumed. Um, let me just say again that um, the government outing reassuring, condemning, isn't different from what they did two years ago. Um, I don't know what progress has been made, um, but it's no surprise coming from a regime that prefers to be seen as a strongman regime than a people or a people's regime. 
Um, a strongman regime wants to show the use of force, state authority. But uh, a people's regime is a realistic one that understands uh, a situation and uh, looks for what is necessary uh, to bring it in check, to bring it under control. Um, you can't do um, a bravado and solve a problem. You have to solve the problem. And so um, I just think Mr. Chiroma has just made an umpteenth outing, which uh, is just one of those outings which would change nothing as long as nothing is done to change the situation on the ground. Now, the, the, the government has been determined to solve this crisis, according to government officials. We saw the Minister of Communication in a series of outings, like you've indicated has said that the government would do everything possible to assure the protection or ensure the protection of the people of the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Taking a look at what has been happening throughout this week since classes, uh, classes resumed, uh, how can you evaluate the strategy of the government of Cameroon to ensure that classes effectively begin in the two Anglophone regions this of government the country? Knows, this government knows the truth. The government is just hiding it from the people. And um, that's partly because it's an election year and the government has to reassure people that it has the situation under control. The government doesn't have it under control. And by the way, Mr. Chiroma is not a, is not a soldier. He's not a general in the army. He's not a, I mean, he's not anywhere near state, state security. He's saying what he's told. But he's the government spokesperson. Well, he's saying what he's, he's told. He's speaking on behalf of ask, the government. Ask the soldiers down in the field. Ask the leg, the foot soldiers. Ask the commanders in the field. You know, of course, what uh, the former commander in Boya, General Mbelingi, told them, and which they didn't like to hear. There is a different reality happening on the ground than what um, they, they wish to show to the people. You know, there was a time when the people could have been fooled because we had one TV channel, one radio station um, to whom they dictated the stories. But today we have Mimi Mefo telling the story from Ekinox TV and uh, um, they may bedevil you for whatever. You are doing your job as a journalist and you're helping to, to show the reality. There is social media that tells us what the reality is. I don't know who is helping who by fooling who about this story. But the situation on the ground is very bad. And I think that um, uh, election aside, this government has to face what is happening on the ground uh, to bring respite to the people of Cameroon. Else it will be too bad for all of us. Just to understand you properly. You said that uh, the outing of the Minister of Communication is not a reflection of what is happening no, on the ground. Not at all. I mean, is, is that what you, you're saying? Because you, you seem to Yaoundé. give the impression that he's not well, reporting you, the realities example, on the ground. For example, if you went to Yaoundé, you've been there, you know what happens at Minkom. There will be no soldiers there as such. It's just maybe police orderly and stuff or the, the gendarmerie orderly. But look at the governor mm -hmm. in Boya. In the war zone, so it's not, place not to... even the real war zone, at the, the, the yeah, edge sure. of the war exactly. zone, he visits a number of schools and you can see the military deployment. That gives you a feel of the reality. So Mr. Chiroma can be saying what he's saying in Yaoundé. I'm sure that um, Governor Kala Bilai is laughing when he hears what Mr. Chiroma is saying. So you see just two people in the same system cannot give the same report if they were sincere. The minister is saying what he's been told to say. I don't know who is fooled by it, but you know what is happening in the field is quite different. And um, that's the governor visiting just schools inside Boya. You know, imagine if he had to go outside Boya. And in then areas like Libya, Lemon, Oh, yes. I mean, that's even too far. Just get to Moyoka or Ikona and, and stuff. And if you imagine going to areas like Mbalangi and, uh, and Banga and whatever, mm. it's a different picture entirely. But that's a, a governor alone going to visit schools and you have that military deployment to secure him. How many children can have that deployment behind them to go to school safely? When you say this as a journalist, people call you names and say you are inflaming. You're just telling a story. You know, there is something I used to be said in the 1980s when, when um, in the 1980s, when, when Minute by Minute was a, a flagship program on TV. And in the promo, one of the journalists there, Julius Swami, used to say, um, the truth hurts. Mm -hmm. Just like when the doctor comes to announce that a relative has cancer. You know? Yeah. Nobody loves it. But whether you hear it or not, whether you that accept to hear it or not, that is true. And if it is saying that he will die in two months or in two years, refusing to hear doesn't keep them alive. They will eventually die. Now, Mr. Franklin Sonne, by just to find out from you about the situation as far as back to school is concerned, UNICEF, the United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization, has spoken talking about the, the, the need 
for institutions to be spared as far as the crisis is concerned. We've seen the outings of the United Nations. NGOs have equally spoken. The government of Cameroon has been speaking. Like you said, we, we have equally spoken. want we have classes spoken. to resume. We want schools what to resume. What can really be done in a situation like this to ensure what has UNICEF effective done, back to school? What has UNICEF done on the field to make their wish come true? So you want them to go beyond... It's just written a texts and statements. And I, I have the feeling they are saying that for the record, so that okay. someday on Judgment Day it will be said that we said something. And no, look, uh, Mimi, um, this situation is very bad. The situation on down the field is very bad. It's only getting worse. You know, um, fighters don't down their arms when they are making gains. We would never have gotten here if this situation were handled before arms came into play. There was a time when it was a talking thing. Now it's a shooting thing. People are being killed. And the fighters, I mean the Ambazonia fighters, are gaining in confidence because they are, they, are, they, 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 they are having achievements. And when people are having achievements, call them mad people. Call them illiterates. Call them even enemies of the state. What do you do if somebody carries a stone and comes around your glass house? You insult them or you try to pamper them and get the stone out of their hands? Which one is wisdom? The one that uh, Mr. Franklin Sonia Bain says is wisdom, might be wisdom. Now, the election in Cameroon will be taking place in exactly one month from now, because it's on the 7th of October 2018, and a lot is taking place at the elections governing body charged with the organization of uh, election in Cameroon. Uh, the, the question that I would want to find out from you is uh, what do you think? about this, this, the nine presidential candidates that are taking part in the election. We have eight, and uh, one additional candidate who is the incumbent, President Paul Bia, that has been there for 36 years. I'll be sincere with you that um, this is a bad year for elections for me. I really love politics and I follow politics from a very tender age. Um, mm -hmm. I wished I were involved in these elections in more than just saying what I'm going to say here now because um, I really love politics and I am a political journalist. But you see this election is coming at a time when um, if I put my head in the election, my heart is not in it because I have a pain back home. I have a pain that preoccupies me more than going to vote for somebody I'm not sure is going to address um, the issues um, that uh, are affecting me personally and affecting my people in a way I don't know how we're going to get out of it. But then because I can comment on elections in any other country, I have mm -hmm. commented on elections in the U.S., yeah. elections in Nigeria, I can comment on this But uh, the, the various candidates have their own different proposals of solving oh, the underground oh yes, crisis. Oh, yes. Has oh, yes. any of the proposals, I, that, have you been convinced by any of those proposals? Well, none, none, of, them, none of them says... Um, outright what they're going to do. Others are talking um, about federation, federation, decentralization. Uh, federation, decentralization. Others are talking about national dialogue. Like that is CRM if they political. become president, yeah, right? Sure. And um, we have to first see whether they can become president knowing um, the realities we have in our country. Well, let me just say that this is a very interesting, and that's why I really regret and cannot be very involved, it's a very interesting election um, season, seeing the caliber of candidates, I think, are uh, much better than we've had before. Um, seeing the setting, the media setting is different. Mm -hmm. There was a time when uh, candidates would um, bother that uh, their story can be carried on state radio television, but I'm not sure anybody is anxious to have their story carried there even anymore because um, attention is not so, not so much there. Equinox is doing a wonderful job. I know right after the news you will have a, um, a roundtable discussion that will run until sometime into the night, About which the is election, very interesting and a lot of people are watching it. Um, other programs, even having people on the set like I am here now, and a lot of the programs that you do, and other TV channels are also doing it. We are, we are really, in terms of the media, we are out of the monologue thick um, setting so that um, messages by, poly by candidates can pass anywhere. Social media is there, has democratized it, and they are, can all express themselves in a way that if Cameroon resembled other countries just a bit, we can expect to have a wonderful thing come out of this election. Just before we go, there are a series of seminars, workshops taking place to train journalists on how to cover this election. What do you think about these seminars? How, can they, uh, how far can they reinforce the capacities of media men and women? I wish I, wish I knew 
just very briefly and I, before and I we wish, go because and time I wish, is And I wish that uh, those who were running, who were doing the, taking part in the seminars were those who were reporting the stories. I have looked at some of the participants um, in some of these seminars. They are not the ones doing the political stories. So I wonder how the, the casting was done to, to get them um, take part in this, uh, in, in the seminars. So uh, it looks like the wrong people are targeted for the right training. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Franklin Sonny Bain, for joining us tonight on Talking Point. We hope to have you some other time pleasure. again. Thank anytime, you so much anytime, for your time anytime. to have you. It was equally a pleasure having with us in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. Wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Until we meet again, goodbye.